Hello and welcome to ITV News Meridian. Your headlines in the Thames Valley. Newbury loses four of its six pharmacies. There's fears tonight of not enough medicines in stock, piling pressure on GP services. Sometimes you go down to the chemist, it's 10, 20, 30 deep. People stood in the rains or weathers, just trying to get their medications. The taxi driver from Abingdon battered and bruised and missing some teeth after a random road rage attack. He says he's traumatised. Also this Friday evening, the U's fans who are getting up close with their favourite players were at Oxford United's training session. And we love the South, whatever the weather. 170 acres of Victorian splendour, an international award for a special country park. Good evening. People living in Newbury say they're concerned about a shortage of pharmacies in the area. The town had six and it's about to go down to two. Rising costs, staff shortages and reduced government financial support have been blamed, even though people are advised to use them to ease pressure on GP services. While well, Matt Congerton is a cancer patient, his wife had to queue for hours to get him morphine, only to find out there was none in stock. He says it left him in pain over a whole weekend. Mike Pierce reports. With record numbers of pharmacies closing, it's not only leading to long waits inside the shops that remain, but queues outside as well. At Thatcham, patients report up to 30 people standing in line, with cancer sufferer Matt saying you can wait an hour and a half. He needs regular drugs for his palliative care. He and his wife have not only faced long queues, but a lack of the drug he needs when they finally get seen. It's just crazy, you know, sometimes you go down to the chemist, it's 10, 20, 30 deep. People stood in the rains or weathers, just trying to get their medications. And then to find out you haven't got your medication, and then you either have got to come back the next day or try and find another pharmacy to get the medication. And what's that meant for you? Oh, it's been horrendous. You know, I've been in absolute excruciating pain um, for, for one weekend. I had no pain relief uh, because I had the cancer in my spine in so much pain, and my wife's been to several chemists to try and get my medication, then to find out they never had it. Since 2015, 1,000 chemists across the country have closed. Lloyd shut its branches in Sainsbury's earlier this year and Boots recently announced 300 closures. Well, here in Newbury Town Centre, there used to be six pharmacies. That's now down to three and will soon be going down to just two. So why are so many closing? Well, some older pharmacists are retiring, more people are shopping online, and there's the issue of cost. Now, pharmacists get paid a set amount by the government per prescription, but the cost of drugs is rising, so they say their profits are down. Natasha, who lives in Newbury and needs regular drugs, says the situation has gone from bad to worse. The situation has just got worse. You can be queuing for anything up to 45 minutes or an hour, that's just to get through the door. Um, and then once you're in, no doubt you will then have to wait for the prescription to be made up as well. At a time when we're told, you know, don't go to your GP, try your pharmacy. Um, that's not advice that I would take, I'm afraid, unless I have um, quite a lot of spare time to, to dedicate to doing that. Pharmacists say more government investment is needed. We would like to be taking on um, more services, providing new services to, to patients, but without new investment from government, uh, we just can't do that. In a statement, the government say they're monitoring the situation and 80% of people live within a 20-minute walk of a pharmacy. They say there's £645 million of extra funding, along with thousands of new training places for pharmacists. But for now, the long waits and the queues continue. Mike Pierce, ITV News, West Berkshire. More of the day's news now. And a house in Oxfordshire in the middle of being extended has collapsed. Firefighters were called to the causeway in Steventon near Abingdon yesterday to report parts of the building had come down. Well, pictures from the scene show some of the side of the three-storey property badly damaged. It was reported nearby houses had to be evacuated because of safety concerns. Well, a cordon is now in place. I walk up and down this road every day. I was only talking to the builders yesterday. They said they were ready to pour the concrete for the extension today. Uh, and of course, I thought I'd walk up and down normal today and find that the end has gone, which reminds me very much of the war. Because I am 
100 years old in two weeks' time. And uh, I've never seen anything like this since the war. A man has been jailed for raping a 12-year-old girl in Wiltshire. Dennis Rocher, who's 18, arranged to meet her via social media in April. The victim told her mother, who informed the police. Rocher was jailed for six years and eight months at Swindon Crown Court. A man who strangled a woman in Wiltshire has been jailed. Matthew Ponchard attacked the woman in November. While on bail, he made phone calls threatening to kill her. He was then caught drink driving in March. The 51-year-old will serve 18 months in prison. Investigations are underway into fly tipping in Banbury, where more than 100 tyres were dumped. 116 were abandoned in a ditch on Banbury Lane next to Overthorpe Road. A council team had to pull them out before they could be taken away. Now, a taxi driver from Abingdon says he's traumatised after being attacked by another motorist in broad daylight. Colin Dobson was left bleeding in his car following the seemingly random attack a week ago. Well, it's left him unsurprisingly shaken and thousands of pounds out of pocket. Nicky Woodcock has his story. In his 15 years as a taxi driver on Oxfordshire's roads, Colin has never before experienced such violence. He was left shocked, bruised and covered in blood. This particular vehicle is trying to force its way into the queue of traffic, then stopped the vehicle on the pedestrian crossing. He got out of the vehicle, came over to my vehicle, opened my door, leaned into the vehicle pretty low down um, and said, you should have let me in and punched me in the face. He was hit with such force, one of his teeth was fractured, leaving his dentist with no choice but to remove it. The dentist said he hadn't seen, I mean, he's been in the business for 30 odd years and he said he hadn't seen anything like this for, for a long time, that so much damage could be caused with one punch. The cost of it was uh, £327 for the emergency treatment, but he is recommending that I have a dental implant, which will be uh, £3,000. I don't have that money. The attack happened at around 3.30pm on the 11th of August along a busy stretch of Oxford Road in Kidlington. Colin says he's seen his fair share of incidents, but few during the day. The most dangerous hours, probably most taxi drivers will tell you this, that the most dangerous hours to be on the roads are between uh, 1 and 6 in the morning when you, know, you have people on the streets who have consumed a lot of, a lot of alcohol and there's a level of relaxation about, uh, about driving around during the day. Um, but obviously that's gone now, and so I'm, I'm using the same level of alertness uh, as I do at night uh, and I'm now you know, doing that during the day, constantly driving around. Uh, looking at my peripheral vision, wondering what can go wrong, um, and that's and that's a pretty sad way to be, you know, to be going going about lawful business on the roads of Oxfordshire. Thames Valley Police is investigating what happened and is urging any witnesses to call 101. Nikki Woodcock, ITV News, Oxfordshire. A police officer and a PCSO have been assaulted at a Marks and Spencer on Winchester High Street. They were called to the store yesterday to reports of a suspected shoplifter attacking security staff. They suffered scratches and bruising and the PCSO suffered homophobic remarks. A 44-year-old from Winchester was arrested on suspicion of ABH, assaults against an officer, theft and public order offences. Upgrades to Oxford Railway Station will now take place around the clock due to delays at the site. Network Rail was forced to pause work in June when an inverted brick arch was found under Botley Road. Well, from September, a second team will be on site 24-7, although the noisiest work will take place during the daytime. And people heading to Reading Festival are being advised to plan their travel to the site as rail services from the station will be severely disrupted because of strike action. The town will be busier than usual during the event next Friday to Sunday. 105,000 people are expected to attend. Thursday next week is expected to be particularly busy as the majority of people will arrive that day. 
Now, Northcroft Lido in Newbury opens on Monday. Visitors will be welcome from 2 p.m. for the first family swim session in the brand new pool, splash pad, and also slides. The facility has undergone a transformation, which means the outdoor swimming season can be extended from April through to the end of September. Just hope the sun shines like it is there. Absolutely. <laughs> Looks fabulous. You're watching ITV News Meridian in the Thames Valley coming up this Friday evening. A wildlife haven from drag dragonflies to nesting birds, the popular country park that's recognised internationally. But the wet weather earlier put a bit of a dampener on a good walk today, didn't it? Fear not though, once we get past this little system, hopefully I've got a better weekend forecast for you. All the details on their way. And you can find more in today's stories on our website and social media. Now, this weekend, Portsmouth will welcome the first cruise passengers through its new port terminal, part of a master plan to transform the city's visitor economy. Yes, the £11 million building, which is carbon neutral, has been paid for with money from the government's levelling up fund. Today, it was officially opened by Portsmouth North MP Penny Mordant, and our reporter, Rachel Hepworth, was there. Job done. Job done. A proud moment as Portsmouth's state-of-the-art cruise terminal extension prepares to welcome its first arrivals. Behind the scenes, there's still work being done, but today's tour was a chance to get a taste of what passengers will experience when Saga's Spirit of Discovery arrives on Sunday. It is amazing. The whole terminal is built around creating an excitement for people going on a journey or Coming, coming back home. It's a romantic building, uh, it's really, really high-end and that is what the cruise line business wants. Capable of processing 2,000 extra passengers at a time, the new building is key to the port's master plan of doubling the number of cruise ships and bringing in millions in tourist spending. The terminal, only begun 18 months ago, was made possible by £11 million of levelling up funding. This really puts Portsmouth on the map for the cruise industry. Uh, and we're not trying to do what Southampton does. They do the very big ships. We're aiming at the smaller, boutique, high-end cruise market, which is why we had to build something that looks as good as this. Dredging work has taken place to safely remove unexploded wartime bombs and increase capacity for the bigger ships, like the 290-metre Mine Sheaf 3, which came into port in May. So these plants, they, they may look fake, but they're actually real, um, and they will take out the pollution that's produced. Um, the terminal is one of the first in the country to run on net zero carbon emissions, as well as these living walls, a combination of solar and wind power, with sustainable seawater used to heat and cool the building. This is probably the most sustainable passenger terminal that, that you will see. We have moved another level in terms of what passengers expect. Everything about this build, building is sustainable. So over the next 10 years, we think this will grow the local economy by £357 million. It's more jobs, it's higher wages, it's fantastic, it's an iconic building too, and it's really helped put us on the map. Ultimately, it's hoped the number of cruise ships coming here will double to around 100 in the next 12 months. That's passenger numbers of about a quarter of a million. That in turn, it's hoped, will create jobs locally and ensure that Portsmouth remains a must-see destination in the future. Rachel Hep with ITV News in Portsmouth. After today's weather, a cruise sounds quite nice. I think we could very nice indeed. Maybe <laughs> we should go on one. <laughs> it's 14 minutes past six. The ITV Evening News continues with the national and international news at 6.30. Here's Lucrezia Millerini. The most prolific baby killer in British history. Neonatal nurse Lucy Letby is found guilty of murdering seven babies in her care and trying to kill six more. I cannot begin to imagine how the families in this case feel today. I just hope that the, today's verdicts bring all of them some peace of mind for the future. Prosecutors described Letby as a calculated opportunist who used how vulnerable the babies were to camouflage her crimes. Well, now the government has ordered an independent inquiry into the case. More reaction on this story at 6.30. Well, it's time now for the sport and Andrew has joined us. So come on then, Andrew. Are the Lionesses going to win the World Cup final? Come on. <laughs> Straight in there. Definitely. <laughs> Straight to the point. I mean, yeah, 
they have exceeded expectation all the all the way along. Yeah. So um, of course they're going to win. Of course, yes. of course the they right are answer. going to beat Spain on Sunday. Uh, certainly, sports fans and sports stars here in the south are backing the Lionesses as is their manager, Serena Wiegmann. We'll hear from her in a moment. But first, with Brighton's player of the season, Katie Robinson, part of the squad in Australia, we've been sent this good luck message from her Albion teammates. Hey Lionesses, we just wanted to wish you all the best for the final. We're all right behind you girls, bring it home. Making a final is special anyway, uh, but with this team and with the challenges we had uh, before the tournament, uh, when we were here and how we, um, yeah, how we find a way all the time to, to solve problems uh, has been amazing. And um, the resilience the team showed has been really good. And I think um, it's very special to be in the final, but now we want to win it too. Away from the World Cup, there's plenty going on at Southampton Football Club. Romeo Lavia has joined Chelsea, Saints getting a whopping £53 million with another five in add-ons. Not bad for a player who cost £10 million a year ago. Meanwhile, Theo Walcott has announced his retirement from playing. The former Newbury schoolboy made his debut for Southampton as a 16-year-old but says he now wants to experience new things in life after playing almost 450 games for Saints, Arsenal, Everton and England. And while Theo left Southampton in the summer, Atlanta Primus has just joined. The daughter of Portsmouth legend Linvoy Primus joining from the London City Lionesses. But we first filmed with her as a six-year-old 20 years ago. Atlanta putting down the tennis racket for football boots and going on to play for Jamaica and now Southampton. Oxford United fans have been given the chance to get up close and personal to their favourite players this week. They were invited along to an open training session as part of the club's efforts to be better engaged with supporters. Mel Bloor went along too. Zero Accounting Software. Sponsors ITV Regional Sports Report. Hughes fans turned out in their hundreds to watch Liam Manning put his players through their paces at Oxford Sports Park. Being able to open it up and, you know, if we can inspire the next Tyler Goodrum or Cats of Donker or, you know, we can provide a social day for somebody, then uh, for me, it's, uh, you know, as a, as a football club, we have a responsibility to do that. Spirits are high in the camp following back-to-back -back wins and the squad is full of confidence heading into tomorrow's League One clash at Barnsley. The team's on a run, you know, we've had, we've had two good performances but it's now not getting overconfident and, like I said, taking the positives from, from Tuesday and, and Saturday and, and taking them into, into the following Saturday. Really quite nice to bring the kids out to see what it's all about a bit more than just on a Saturday afternoon. So yeah, really, really good. Obviously it's great for Harry to bring him along first open day. Uh, went to his first away game in the week as well to Derby. So lucky, lucky start. And how excited are you about seeing the players today? Very. Who's your favourite? Mark. Mark. Mark Harris. <laughs> oh, it's brilliant to come to the Open Day to meet other fans, um, enjoy the facilities and um, see what goes on behind the scenes, watch them train and hopefully a little bit of gossip on the new signings that might come in. I'm not sure leaking any transfer news was what the club had in mind. Nonetheless, a good day was had by all. Mel Bloor, ITV News, Oxford. And it's not just Oxford United on a roll. Tomorrow, Bournemouth, Brighton, Southampton, Portsmouth, Reading, Crawley and Swindon are all also looking to build on positive results from last time out. Finally from me, just in case you were concerned about my prediction, I can confirm the Lionesses will win on Sunday because the mystic meerkats from Sussex say so. They've predicted England will win against Spain in their World Cup final on Sunday morning. The animals at Drusilla Zoo Park were offered two buckets of treats with the team's flags on, just as they have been for the last three rounds. And it was the England bucket that was super popular, so there can be no doubt. <laughs>
uh, whether you are cheering on your uh, local teams or like the meerkats cheering on the lionesses here's to a very successful weekend we love the meerkats so obviously they're all going to go in that bucket they're very clever they're not silly. No, not silly at all. <laughs> and of course, the, the, the game is going to be here on ITV1 Sunday morning, 11 o'clock. Obviously, we'll, you'll be watching. Absolutely, I'll be watching. And the Meerkats predicted an England win, but Andrew, if you had to predict the score line, what would you say? Oh, well, actually, I mean, there was about five or six Meerkats, and they <laughs> all went in. Than... Five or six nil, oh, clearly. Good, I think that sounds good. good. <laughs> that sounds good. Lovely. Thanks very much. And you'll be watching as well, hopefully. Of course, yeah, I'll be at home with the boys cheering on the Lionesses. What about you guys? Well, I I'm going to be at Stubbington Art, RSPCA Centre, with a fate. They've got their fate this mm. Sunday at 11 o'clock, but I'm sure I'll be with the animals and we'll be cheering them on Find together. Find a way to watch. Definitely. Cheer on the Lionesses. All together. <laughs> Thanks so much, Andrew. Thank, Thank you. you. Now, it was once the private playground of a wealthy Victorian businessman who made a fortune selling ostrich feathers. Today, it's a public space enjoyed by thousands of visitors every year. Now, we are talking about Buckham Country Park near Crawley in Sussex. For the latest in our series, We Love the South, Malcolm Shaw has been finding out why the park has won an International Environmental Award 13 years in a row. Just a few miles from Gatwick and close to Crawley lies a hidden gem. This is Buckham Country Park, 170 acres of woods and water. In a busy world, it's an oasis of peace and tranquility. Simon, tell me a bit about the history of the park. Well, the park sits on what was once um, a, a Victorian estate. Um, the land was owned by a gentleman called Philip Saylard and he is the one that's responsible for most of the infrastructure of the park like the dam that we're walking across with these lovely castellated features and the boathouse and of course uh, doused upon behind us as well as these lovely waters which are designated sites of special scientific interest for their um, fantastic dragonfly populations um, we've also got acres and acres of uh, fantastic woodland with some really nice veteran trees dotted about through there the country park attracts around 170,000 people every year. Even on a rainy day like this, it's popular with visitors, especially dog walkers. Come most lunch times and sometimes on the weekend um, to walk the dog. And it's a walk for me as well because I get a bit of exercise while she gets exercise. <laughs> I grew up just over the road sort of thing um, and I've got amazing memories of like hiding in the forest, lots of things like that. It's absolutely fabulous and helping to keep it fabulous is an army of volunteers. Today, Laurie and George are busy rebuilding a post and rail fence around the island pond. Retired, I was looking for something to do and one day I was walking through the park and they were busy here working. And so I you know, asked whether they need any volunteers. They said yes and I've been here ever since. Lovely to be out outdoors. Uh, physical activity, get rid of your frustrations, variety of work, you never know what's going to happen, what's going to be a day to day, all weathers, sometimes it's great, lovely, enjoy the sunshine and sometimes you just have to grin and bear it. The country park was officially opened to the public back in 1982, 41 years on it's going from strength to strength. Buchan has just received the prestigious green flag, an international award for parks and green spaces. It's the 13th year in a row that it's met the demanding criteria. Buckham Park is, is really the County Council's flagship country park. Um, it's the largest countryside site that we own. Um, it's, it, it's of strategic importance because it's very close to Crawley, Horsham and other new developing communities in the north of the county. And it really provides a green lung for a huge amount of people living in this part of the county. Improving the park for wildlife is an important priority. More than 30 acres of rare lowland heath have been restored, like here on Target Hill. If we get the heath and right, we can have birds such as nightjar breeding on it, and we have records for nightjar breeding here. Ground nesting birds in particular sort of will benefit from the sort of structure of the, the, the heathland. Um, we try to, in the summer, protect them 
and protect by um, reducing the level of potential dog disturbance on the site. So when we're taking the birch out in the winter, we create dead hedges, which are layered hedges around the site, which just act as gentle barriers. All this is open to the public every day of the year for free. If you've never been to Buchan Country Park, maybe now's the time to see what you've been missing. Malcolm Shaw, ITV News, Crawley. What a beautiful place. Always a good sign when people are still there with the umbrellas and yeah, the hoods Yeah, when up. it's raining, definitely. Absolutely. And all the dog walkers are one. We'll have to go there myself. Well, let's find out what's happening. Hopefully, no more rain. James Wright is coming next with your forecast. Whatever the weather, it always feels like home. Valent Heat Pumps and Boilers sponsor ITV Meridian Weather. Hi there, good evening. There's more heavy rain on the cars for tonight and then it gives way to something a little better for the weekend. This is Storm Betty, as named by the Irish Met Office. That's going to bring us some heavy weather too. Not as bad, though. Uh, once that clears, it's back to a very similar pattern that we've seen over the last few weekends. Difference this time is a bit more high pressure near to where we are. So things going downhill this evening. Yellow warning in force for 60 to 80 millimetres of rain, possibly in just a short spell of time. It's mainly for the eastern side of our patch, but we're all going to get wet through the overnight period. It's going to be a dry end to the night, but a warm and muggy one, lows of 17 to 19 Celsius, and a bit of a blustery breeze once that rain clears. And that will certainly be a feature of the weather tomorrow. Bright and breezy really being the order of the day. Uh, we will once again see a few showers developing. The heaviest of them set to be to the north of us, a little like last weekend where we see a few pushing through Wiltshire up into the Thames Valley, Oxfordshire area. Elsewhere, there's a fair chance of staying dry. It will stay breezy, so that's going to take the edge off the feel of the temperatures, which aren't actually too bad. 22 or 23 Celsius, a little fresher near the coast, obviously. As far as Sunday goes, sort of a rinse and repeat. Sunny spells of the odd shower, starting to get a little less breezy, so starting to feel warmer, and it'll get warmer still through Monday and Tuesday. Valent Heat Pumps and Boilers sponsor ITV Meridian Weather. He said warmer still. I'm, I'm yeah. liking the sound of yes, that. that we'll take good. that. Thank you very much. Now, in just a moment, the ITV Evening News with Lucrezia Millerini, and I'll be back with your late news. So, <laughs> hopefully, see you after half ten. For now, though, from all the team here at ITV Meridian, thank you for watching. Enjoy your weekend, whatever you're doing. Bye bye for now. Bye bye. <laughs>